Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 12 for chapter 9. The topic is on partial differential equations. This is the last video in this chapter and the last video for this course. Let's begin with the classification of second order linear PDEs. Let's consider such a PDE in a general form where u is um, the unknown. So we have all the second derivatives here, uxx, uxy, and uyy, multiplied by some coefficients a, b, and c, and then they equal to the right-hand side, which we collect all the other terms. So this is a function of uh, the independent variable xy, the unknown, and the lower partial derivatives. So the way we um, write it like that, the reason why we um, emphasize these um, higher order derivative terms is that the type of the PDE is solely determined by um, these three terms. And actually, it's only determined by one value, that is what we call the discriminant delta, which is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, so the b squared minus 4ac. So there are three cases depending on the sign of it. So if delta is bigger than zero, then this PDE is hyperbolic. We have seen an example that is the wave equation, utt minus c squared uxx equals zero. So here you see a is one, b is zero, and c is negative c squared, and the delta will be bigger than zero. And the second case, when delta equals zero, and the PDE is called parabolic. And the example would be um, the heat equation that we have encountered. So the second derivative term is only here, so it only has um, c squared. So um, you will have um, a is positive and b and c is zero, and then delta is zero. The last case is when delta is less than zero, and we call the PDE is of elliptic type. An example will be the Laplace equation or the Poisson equation, uxx plus uyy equals zero. So here we'll have a is one and c is one, but b is zero. And then um, delta will be negative because b is zero and this is a negative term. So um, this um, bears um, resemblance, the names bears resemblance to um, what we learned um, up when we graph the second order polynomials. Now, if we have a more general case where the a, b, and c's are not constants, but they are variable coefficients, that is, they are functions of the independent variable, then it could happen that the discriminant, which now is also a function of x and y, it can change sign in different regions of the domain. In this case, um, the equation is called of mixed type. And in general, mixed type equations are very difficult to study. Now we want to have a, a more detailed discussion on the characteristics. Such concept we have already encountered in the um, when we study the wave equation and when we constructed the D'Alembert's solution of the wave equation. Here we want to put it in a somewhat more general setting. So we're going to consider the um, constant coefficient homogeneous second order um, PDE in this form. And for this equation, we seek solution specifically of the form uxy equal to some function which depend only on y minus rx. And the function phi is arbitrary. So um, if that shall be the solution, then y minus rx equal to constant will be a straight line in the domain. And along this line, um, phi is constant. So the solution is a constant. So such lines will be called um, a characteristics. And the job here would be to find the value of r that will fit this equation and then eventually find the function phi. 
Okay, so how do we find this value r? Well, we can um, just uh, plug in this equation, the solution back into the equation and see what comes out. So we can apply the chain rule. u sub x would be differentiating this in x, and then we'll get a negative r in the front. And then you differentiate it twice, then you get r squared and phi double prime. And the y derivative would just be the y derivative times 1. So second derivative, you just get second derivative. And the um, mixed derivative, if you differentiate in x first, you get a negative r. Then you differentiate one more time in y, you get 1, so you get a negative r here. Okay, we can put these back into the equation. uxx times a, uxy times b, and uyy here times c equals 0. So we see that in this um, equation we have um, derived, there is a common factor phi double prime. So phi is an arbitrary function, therefore phi double prime is not zero in general. If you want this to hold for any arbitrary functions of phi, then you can just drop this phi and then you must require what remains to be zero. So we get a times r squared minus br plus c equals 0. And we see that is a second order polynomial in r. This equation is called the characteristic equation or the characteristic polynomial. So if we solve this to find r, we see that it depends on um, the coefficient abc that will give you different types of roots, let's call it R1 and R2. And in particular, the type of roots depends on the sign of this discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. So we see that if delta is bigger than zero, that is when the equation is hyperbolic, then we have two roots that are real and distinct. And second, if delta is zero, which means we have a parabolic equation. And in that case, the roots are real and repeated, r1 equals r2. The third case, if lambda is less than zero, then and this um, is an elliptic equation. In that case, then the r1 and r2 are complex conjugate pairs. So here um, we see that this case here when R1 and R2 are real and distinct, um, is most um, useful for us because then this in the end will give us two arbitrary functions, one taking R1 and the other taking R2, and the linear combination of them will give us um, the solution. And there are two unknown functions here. This is the second order equation. So one can nail down the two functions. Okay, And for this one, um, you can have one, um, but it's much more complicated, and, and also for the last case. So um, for the rest of the discussion, we'll be focusing on the first case. Okay, focusing on the case where the equation is of hyperbolic type with constant coefficient. Let now R1 and R2 be the roots, and they are real and distinct. Then we can write out the solution. So the solution will be a function phi1, and which is a function of y minus r1x, and another function we call phi2, which only depends on y minus r2x. And here phi1, phi1, phi2 are arbitrary functions, and they will be determined eventually by boundary conditions or initial conditions, depending on the problem you have if it's time dependent or not. Okay, let's now go through some um, examples to um, fix the idea of how to find solutions. So let's consider um, this equation here. And we want to find solutions by using the method of characteristics. And we have boundary conditions at x equals zero, u is given and u sub x is given. Okay, so let's set up the characteristic equation. So we'll have r squared minus 3r plus 2, 
and you can factorize this to be r minus 1 times r minus 2 equals 0 and then you easily find the two roots 1 and 2 and then we know that the solution will take the form of a function phi 1 and then the function phi 2 with r1 and r2 in it and putting in the values then phi 1 is a function of y minus x and phi 2 is a function of y minus 2x okay phi 1 phi 2 are arbitrary and we will um, determine them by boundary conditions I'm putting in now the first boundary condition here put x to be 0 when x is 0 we just get phi 1 of y plus phi 2 of y and they must equal to f of y so that is one condition and now we need to check the second boundary condition here okay so for the second boundary condition we would now first compute the um, derivatives we compute the x derivative u sub x and you differentiate this in x you get negative 1 in front of phi 1 prime and then differentiate this in x you get a negative 2 in front of phi 2 prime and setting y to be um, setting x to be 0 in there then this is 0 this is 0 you get negative phi 1 prime y minus 2 phi 2 prime y equals 0 so um, this is a differential equation but it's constant coefficient and has 0 on the right hand side and then um, we can easily conclude that this equation means phi 1 y plus 2 phi 2 y must equal to a constant where this m capital m is just an integration constant okay now using this together with the constraint we get in the previous page that is phi 1 plus phi 2 equals f one can easily solve it for phi 1 and phi 2 so phi 1 is this this guy here and phi 2 is this guy here okay and then we can put these back into the solution and write out the solution is phi 1 of y minus x phi 2 of y minus 2x so in phi 1 put y to be um i'm sorry typo here so it should be y minus x and then um put phi 2 here to be y minus 2x and then you see that the negative m will cancel this m and then we carry the negative sign here and that will be the form of the solution okay let's take um one more example we consider this equation utt plus utx equals zero and i have initial condition u at t0 is fx and ut at t0 is g of x okay so let's um set up the characteristic equation so here we can consider um t is x and x is y um, um put this into the the discussion we did the general discussion we did at the beginning um, of this slice so this will give us r square and this will give us negative r and there's no um u x x term so there's no term there then we get r times r minus 1 we factorize it equals 0 which give us two roots 0 and 1 okay and then um solution can be written as this form where phi and psi are two arbitrary functions with r1 and r2 you plug in the value r1 is 0 r2 is 1 and you get this form and then we need to find phi and the psi okay using the first in initial condition we'll put t to be zero then you get phi plus psi should be f of x and then we will find the um second initial condition where we need a t derivative so you differentiate it the first term is just phi of x so it has nothing and then here's psi prime with the negative one in the front and let's put t to be zero here we get the negative psi prime of x equal gx 
So this now is just an equation involving psi. G is given and we can solve it. In fact, we can just integrate it from x naught to x, where x naught is arbitrary. Then we'll get phi of x will be phi of x naught minus, move this minus sign over, the integral of the g. Once we have obtained the function psi, then we can find the phi by using the previous um, constraint we obtained. So phi would be f minus psi, so it would be f minus this guy psi here. Okay, now we have the two functions, we can put them back and uh, to find the solution. So the solution will be phi of x plus psi of x minus t. So phi of x, we put it in here, and then for psi, wherever we had x, we will put it in to be x minus t. And then we see we can simplify this expression. We can cancel this with that, and we can combine the integral, two integrals into one. Okay, so we'll have f of x here, and we have this integral coming from here, and this integral from here, so we change the negative sign into a plus sign and then we um, exchange the order and so we integrate now from x minus t to x naught and then um, this these two integrals from x minus t to x naught and then from x naught to x will be just the integral from x minus t to x okay so now we have our solution which is just this simple looking expression where this is the initial um, function of the function value and that's the initial at t equals zero the derivative of the unknown okay so um, that concludes um, this video and um, concludes the chapter and concludes this course so that's all i have to say and i wish you um, enjoyed um, all the videos I have here and um, hopefully I shall um, make more videos in the future and I'll see you then.